Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russia Through Propaganda. We're on day 72, and today we're beginning to add our remaining three plural case forms. And as I mentioned before, these endings are going to be actually really easy, at least in the plural, right? So this is a great chance to not only add the plural, which will be super easy, but also, of course, to review the singular case endings. And uh, again, if at this point you've, you're getting comfortable with the case endings, that's a huge step forward in, in Russian. Uh, that's really one of the one of the major milestones in terms of beginner's Russian, first year Russian is learning the case endings because as you know you can't say much of anything without knowing the case endings. Uh, in case you're wondering, you know, uh, you start out by kind of learning these as tables, it's kind of very dry and uh, you may be wondering will you ever get used to them. Yes you will, it just takes practice, right? So in time you'll be able to manipulate these endings sort of just by uh, by instinct, you won't even really have to think about it in most cases. But that'll take a lot of practice. Anyway, for now, let's at least uh, just learn what the endings are. And let's start out with another fun uh, uh, poster. Stranach Kapitalisma. And then, you know, dot, dot, dot. We see what's happening there. And compare that to Strania Socialisma. Right? So look what happens in the countries of capitalism. That's prepositional plural, right? Stranach. You know, the ach ending. And then in the other one, there's only one uh, country that has social socialism, right? That's the USSR, I suppose, right? Stranje, and we're back to prepositional singular. Okay, so let's first review the prepositional singular and note that you know this is a lot more complicated because in the singular, we've got to worry about uh, gender issues, right? We get different endings sometimes depending on the gender of the noun, and so things are much are, are quite complicated. Now we know already that in the plural, that's generally not the case. Uh, now, so far in this, in the nominative and genitive plural, we have seen some gender distinctions. We had some different endings to worry about. There were quite a few irregularities. But from here on out, beginning today with the prepositional plural, that will not be the case. And so for the prepositional uh, dative instrumental plural, we don't have to worry at all about gender. The only distinction made is between hard and soft nouns. Okay, so we're viewing the prepositional singular, right? Adjectives are going to be om or oi. And we have the soft versions, yem, yay. Uh, and then nouns are going to end in yeah, right? So that, that goes for both uh, feminines and neuters. Now, of course, there are a couple of other endings. But, so let's look at some examples. Novi uh, stol, we would get na novom stalia, that's masculine. Sini uh, slavar, that's a soft masculine. We get sinim slavaria. Note that the adjective here is also soft. So we write yem to preserve that softness. In a Russian book, feminine, Ruske Knigye. Again, the noun is taking ye. Yeah. Okay, remember that special soft nouns, uh, especially neuters and uh, feminines, which are so common, they take that special ending ee -E here. And remember, that's the main reason we group them separately. So it's not starom abshijitsi ye, yeah. it's starom abshijitsi or naskushne lexi. Right, so if you don't haven't learned that yet, be sure and uh, circle it here. It's really important, uh, really an important ending. Finally, e nouns take e, right? V maetitradzi, right? So that's just a different pattern, but it's not v maetitradzi, right? V maetitradzi. And remember that uh, we do we do all this have this alternate locative ending, right? Meaning it, it's only used to describe location. That is a stressed u that we see with certain masculine nouns, not very many. And we gave kind of a short list of the major ones. So, for example, shkaf. If it's in the shkaf, we say v v shom shkafu. Shkafu. Okay, let's review a bit uh, from yesterday, right? With uh, by saying, uh, talking about being in these countries um, or in these places. Uh, so this will get prepositional singular. V Kanadzie, v Polsce, v Rosji. Special soft feminine, v Kazakhstanie, v Czechie, v Amerikie, v Ukrainie, v Gruzii. Now, you know, of course, we have a lot of special soft feminines here, so they're taking ee, -E. v Litvie, and uh, now these continents are going to take na, na Zapadie, or here, points of the compass, right? Na Vostokie. Uh, Vazi, yes, I misspoke. I mean, uh, Zapad and Vostok are, of course, points of the compass. Those are non nouns, but uh, continents are, they take V, so you say Vazi in Asia. Uh, Vivropia, Sibiri, remember that's a, that's a feminine e noun. Vgretsi, 
Vizraelia, that's a soft masculine. Shvetsi na Kavkazia. Remember, that's a mountain range. Uh, so it, it, mountain ranges take na in Russian, usually. Okay, uh, so uh, let's now use o. Remember, o, meaning about, also takes the prepositional. Um, so let's say about the Russian language. Arruska musikia. About Georgian cuisine, Agruzinska kuchnya. Uh, Georgia is famous for its uh, cooking and its uh, its food and its wine. So even if you're in Russia, by the way, you'll get a chance to. There are lots of Georgian restaurants, and often that's something students really love is kind of discovering Georgian food, and uh, it's definitely worth looking into. Okay, uh, three Franzuski vino a Franzuskom vinia. About Japanese sushi, okay, so sushi, remember, is not going to be um, uh, declined, right? A japonskom sushi. About German philosophy, a niemieckej filosofii. About Czech beer, a czeskom pivie, also worth exploring. Italianska pasta, a ob, here we get the bleh because we're starting with a vowel. A italianska pastia. About Armenian cognac, brandy. Ob Armianskim Konyakia. Again, we get Ob because of the Ah. Uh, God, I can't say this today. Ob Armianskim Konyakia. About Ukrainian borscht. Ob Ukrainskim Borshia. Ob Angliski football. About English football. Ob Angliskim footballia. About uh, Chinese art. A Kitaiskim Iskustvia. And about Greek history. A Greciski. Histori. Now we have a few uh, nouns here that take that alternate stressed u ending. We really need to watch out for that. Now, again, keep in mind that this only happens with masculine nouns, and there aren't just a whole lot of these. Uh, so this is a fairly limited thing, but it's also quite important. So most is one of those bridge. So on the palace bridge would be na dvartsova mastu. On the shore of the Neva, na birigu nivui. In a Moscow airport, v Moskovskom aeroportu, right? That may be one of the most common ones, especially, you know, if you're traveling, obviously. Chitirya in, in the summer garden in Petersburg. V letnim sadu, note that letni is uh, soft, is a soft adjective. In the Siberian snow, v Sibirskom snigu. Uh, in the Crimea, that would be v Krimu, v Krimu. Right. Again, that's also a bit unusual because it's a, it's a peninsula, so it's, you know, you would think it might be na krimu, but usually it's simply f krimu. On the edge of the table, here's a soft uh, masculine noun that does this, na kraju stala, and on the dirty floor is na gryaznam palu. Okay, so that does it for our review of the singular forms, which hopefully aren't too uh, unfamiliar at this point. Now we're to the new topic today, prepositional plural, and again, this is very easy. Uh, look at a poster. Živi v jakách strana socializma. Live in the ages, country of socialism. You live forever. Okay, so uh, we see v jakách. Right there is our ach. That's our noun ending. Uh, so adjectives in the prepositional plural are going to take ich. Of course, we would expect a soft version of that ich. Uh, and then nouns ach, soft version jach. So that's it. That's it. You're done learning the prepositional plural. This applies to all genders. Again, the only thing we're worried about is hard versus soft. Of course, keep in mind also spelling rule issues could dictate which of these endings we use, right? It's not always hard or softness per se. So, for example, novi stol on new tables would be na novich stalach. Uh, in blue notebooks, a soft adjective, soft noun, sinich titradjich. Okay, and again, the spelling rules may affect these endings. So, viesh is a soft, uh, you know, it's a it's a feminine e noun, uh, but we can't write ya after sh, right? So we say adragich vishach. Similarly, dragoi is not a soft noun, but because of the seven letter spelling rule, we can't write u. So instead, we write e. Okay, so as long as we keep in mind the hard versus soft distinction and all these spelling rules we've learned since like day three or something, right? It will be fine in prepositional plural. Okay, so here we're given um, phrases first off in the prepositional singular. Let's switch that to the plural. So again, this should be relatively easy. 
about an American newspaper, Ab Amerikanske Gazette, about American newspapers would be Ab Amerikanskich Gazetach, about European politics, uh, politica here is in the singular. Uh, sorry, I misspoke a little bit. This is a uh, I'll just say quickly, the word for politics in Russian is politika, it's feminine, singular. The word for politician is um, politik, which is masculine. Okay, so it's sometimes easy to confuse those, and I just wasn't paying good attention here. So the, the first example is about a European politician, right? And we see that clearly from the om ending. A, a evropeiskom politike. So how do we say talk about European politicians, plural? A evropeiskich politikach. Three, a norvegskom pisatelje. About Norwegian writers, plural would be a norvegskich uh, I'm a big fan of Norwegian literature. If you like, ever want to check that out, there's lots of good stuff there. Anyway, a vengerskom chudožnikje. About a Hungarian artist, so artist plural would be a vengerskich chudožnikach. Pies about a Russian tradition, so let's make that plural. A ruskich tradiciach, excuse me, a ruskich tradiciach. Sheist, a niemetskim philosophia, about a German philosopher, so plural would be a niemetskich philosophach. Philosophy, remember, is philosophia, a philosopher is a philosoph. Siem, about a uh, Dutch tulip. A galanskom tulpanje, plural would be a galanskich tulpanach. Voisim, a Peterburskom kanalia, about the P a Petersburg Canal, of which there are many, so we could talk about the Petersburg Canals, a Peterburskich kanalach. Dievit, a Turetskom kurortje, about a Turkish resort, a Turetskich kurortach. Diesit a Greciske vase, about a Greek vase, plural a Greciskich vasach. Adinitsit a Sinu moria, about a Greek, a, a blue seas, plural, a Sinich mariach. Now there we get that stress shift, right, because the plural of moria is maria, if you remember all that stuff. And as we said quite a few times, right, any stress shifts we see in the nominative plural are typically going to carry over into all plural forms, and that also goes for today, right, the prepositional plural. Now again, if you look back over that exercise, you see this is pretty easy going from singular to plural because in the prepositional we don't have to even really know what gender we're dealing with, right? We just need to look, I know, is the adjective and noun, are they hard or soft? Are there any spelling issues that crop up, right, spelling rule issues, and so forth. Okay, now, so speaking of stress in plural forms, here's just, here are some more examples, right? Vino, a vinie, more, na, strana, strania, slavar, slavaria. There's an in stress now, by the way. A tiazabatse, gorod, v gorodie. So we see that with the exception here of the in stress now, where we get slavaria, uh, these uh, singular forms are all the, all the stress is on the same syllable in all singular forms. Now, these particular nouns in the plural, they all shift, and we see not only do they shift in the uh, nominative plural, but also in, again, all case forms as a rule, and including today in the prepositional plural. So, vina means wines, a vinach, maria na mariach, strani v stranach, slavari v slavariach, atsli abatsach, grada v gradach. So this is something we'll talk about in book four when we review stress patterns and nouns, but uh, one way to think of this is columnar stress, meaning in the singular column you've got one thing going on, right? The stress tends to stay on one particular syllable. Sometimes in the that syllable will change, but within the plural, in that plural column, it's going to normally be consistent, right? So that's that's the major difference in, uh, in terms of stress patterns for nouns, right? A lot of them will change from the singular to the plural, but within the singular or within the plural, it tends to be consistent. Now, there's a lot more to say about stress, so don't uh, I don't mean to oversimplify this, but that's a general generally a very good guideline. Okay, so let's let's try the same thing as before, but now we we've, we've got to watch out for stress. A Grozinskom vinier, okay, vinoa. That's one of those neuters. So about Georgian wines, 
That would be Agruzinskich Vinach. A Baltiske Strania, about a, a Baltic country. Now, Strana, the plural will be Strani, right? It's one of those feminine nouns that jump, jumps backwards. So, about Baltic countries would be A Baltiskich Stranach. About a Japanese city, a Yaponskum Gorodje. Okay, Gorod, the plural is Grada, as we saw up in the table, right? It's one of those nouns, that, one of those masculines that takes a nominative plural and stressed A. Ah. So, we'd say A. Ah, that's my place. A Yaponskich Gradach. Okay, about mineral water. What if we have multiple mineral waters? A mineralnych vodach. Right? Vada gives vode a vodach. Na futbolnum polia. Okay, there's a two syllable neuter. The plural would be palia. And so, and so on football fields would be na futbolnich paliach. Sheist. About the Peter, Petersburg Palace. Okay, this is just a, this is a mobile vowel now, and so Dvaryats gives, uh, right, Advartse in the singular, and same thing in the plural here, it'll be A Peterburskich Dvartsach. A Peterburskich Dvartsach. Siem, about the Napoleon, the Napoleonic War, right, plural usually would be the Napoleonic Wars. A Napoleonovskich, ah, sorry, I misspoke. A Napoleonovskich Voynich. Right, so voina, that's a feminine, uh, instressed, that'll tend to jump back in the plural, voinli. And so we, we get a napoleonovskich voinich. Voisim, on the shores of the Neva. Na birigach nyvi. Okay, so that's a, that's just an instress now, on biriga. Oh, sorry, no, I misspoke. It's a, the plural is biriga. So it's, that's the issue here. It's one of these nouns that takes stressed a ah in the nominative plural. And so we say biriga and prepositional plural na birigach. Okay, another one poised is one of these plural plural trains is poizda. So we could talk a buistrich poizdach. A buistrich poizdach. Okay, the tsar is an in stress masculine, so plural would be tsari. About the Russian tsars would be aruskich tsariach, soft. And Adinitz, it's about a good seat, like in the theater. Okay, that's miesta. So that's uh, plural, would get, would be miesta. And we talk about acharoshich miestach. Okay, so there are, uh, you see, with these examples, sometimes you do sort of have to worry about uh, gender, right, in the sense that you're, you're worried about stress patterns. Uh, so th these examples are a little bit trickier. Okay, so that does it for today's uh, lesson. Uh, tomorrow we're going to move right ahead with the dative plural and then the instrumental plural. After that, so we're going to move through these remaining plural forms very quickly. And then you can uh, really congratulate yourself, maybe throw a, a small celebration, right, for having learned all of the Russian case forms. Okay, so uh, until next time, do svidanya, tavarishi, vpiryork novim pabyadam.